All right, well, first of all, I realize I'm the only thing keeping you all from lunch break, so I'll try to get through this fairly quick. Um, yeah, I work for the Illinois River Biological Station with INHS, and my talk will be a catch comparison of fishes and turtles and hoop nets using three bait types. Uh, so before I get started, I want to thank my co-authors. Um, so Levi and Chris with LTRM did a lot of uh, the hoop netting that involves soybean bait, which is one of the baits we'll be comparing, um, as well as my partner in crime, Jesse Williams, who um, is, I'll get into it in a little bit, but my partner on the black carp project, which is using the cottonseed and clam bait. Um, I also want to thank our technicians. Um, all of this field work and data collection that went into this would not be possible without them. And then the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and IDNR for the funding for the black carp portion of this project. Um, so just a little background before I get started. Um, this project involves hoop netting. Um, as you can see in this picture here, this is um, what our large hoop nets look like. They are four inches in diameter. We also have, or excuse me, four feet in diameter. We also have small hoop nets that are two feet in diameter. They are meant to sample the breadth of the benthic fish community. They are used in flowing water as they are set parallel with the shoreline and the flow of the water going downstream is what keeps them open. Um, I mentioned we use both four and two footers. However, uh, different management and research agencies as well as commercial anglers use different sizes and different meshes uh, to target different sizes of fish. There's also some folks that use them without bait and then those that do. Um, and the use of different types of bait is what I'm gonna get into in a minute here. Um, so also a little more background information. So uh, Levi who just presented talked a little bit about the LTRM data, um, which stands for the Upper Mississippi River Restoration Programs Long-Term Resource Monitoring Elements. Uh, for the rest of the talk, I will just say LTRM. Uh, so this samples the fish community in the LaGrange reach of the Illinois River here between the town of LaGrange and Peoria, Illinois. Uh, now this is meant to sample the full fish community using combination of boat electrofishing, fike nets, mini fike nets, and hoop nets. Um, this is on the main channel, side channels, and backwaters. However, these hoop nets that are gonna be the focus of this talk are on the main channel and side channel borders. And these are baited with soybean cake. Now, um, another kind of background information here. Many of you, or probably most of you are familiar with Asian carp or invasive carps. And you probably think of the jumping silver carp, uh, the big head carp and grass carp. However, the least known of these four is the black carp, which you see in this picture here. This is actually the second largest individual ever recorded and the largest ever caught on hook and line. This was caught about two months ago in Missouri, weighing 112 pounds. Um, they're relatively uncommon. They are definitely the least common and least known about of these invasive carp species, um, but they're increasing in Illinois waters. They are known to be a molluscivore. Recently, we found that they're a little bit more generalist, eating more um, aquatic insects and things of that nature. Um, however, they do eat snails and mussels, which is not good because approximately 70% of our native mussels are imperiled. And there's a lot of native, or excuse me, knowledge gaps um, on these black carp. And so this brings me to what I like to refer to as team black carp. So, Jesse Williams and myself are co-leading a project that started in 2019, investigating the abundance, range, and bait preferences of these black carp in the lower Illinois River, specifically that LaGrange reach that I mentioned. We are sampling for these black carp using hoop nets with specialized baits, including clam and cottonseed based bait. Um, the idea with clam is that they're molluscivores, so they eat mussel meat, certainly they'll eat clam uh, meat, and the cottonseed based bait. Now you might not think a molluscivore would want to eat cottonseed, 
However, there is a commercial angler, there's several commercial anglers on the lower Illinois River, as well as the Mississippi River that have caught black carp using cottonseed bait in their hoop nets um, while targeting buffalo. Now, thus far, we've had limited black carp captures. However, like I said, we use the same protocols as the LTRM folks. Um, we both use three kilograms of bait in our nets. We both sample side by side, um, large and small hoop nets. And so this gave way to the potential to do a bait comparison. Uh, so our bait comparison will be comparing the catch rates of different fishes in hoop nuts using clam, cottonseed, and soybean. Um, previous studies in the literature, there's not a whole lot looking at these specific baits. Um, however, there's a lot of work done with blue and channel catfish, looking at things like cheese bait, um, some sort of like cornmeal baits, and zoat soap, um, which I have a picture here you can just get from Walmart. Um, a lot of people use this zoat soap to, uh, it attracts catfish and uh, keeps turtles away, which I found interesting. We don't use this, but just thought that was an interesting tidbit in the literature. So uh, yeah, not just fish, turtles as well. We also get a lot of turtles in our hoop nets. So um, try to potentially minimize some of that bycatch in the future. We wanted to uh, compare turtle catch rates as well. Um, so yeah, we put small and large hoop nets side by side. We do 48 hour net sets. So that's generally two net nights. Uh, three kilograms of the different bait goes into each net. So that's about six and a half pounds. Um, and then we use catch per unit effort, uh, which is a relative abundance, um, looking at the number of fish or the number of each species per net set. So for example, 10 catfish per set of hoop nets. Um, and then I just use simple ANOVAs to uh, compare catch rates between our three different baits. Uh, so diving right into some of our results, uh, you can see in 2019, we caught a lot more channel catfish than we did in 2020. Um, in 2019, um, soybean bait did get significantly more channel catfish. However, if you remove two nets that combine for over 400 uh, juvenile channel catfish, this pretty much wipes away any significant difference. Um, so although we're kind of seeing that soybean to an extent samples for those younger fish, um, we didn't see any real significant differences as far as those baits between catfish, or excuse me, channel catfish. Now, as far as freshwater drum, our catch rates were fairly similar between the two years. And uh, it's one thing I like to bring up. I was pointed out, for those of you that are familiar with the surprise Pikachu meme, I do think that freshwater drum looks kind of similar to that. Anyways, back to business. Uh, we did see that cottonseed bait captured significantly more freshwater drum than either of the other two baits in 2019 and significantly more than soybean in 2020. So cottonseed bait does seem to be um, a strong bait to use when targeting freshwater drum. Uh, moving on to smallmouth buffalo, which uh, aren't targeted a whole lot by recreational anglers, but it's one of our more commonly uh, commercially fished uh, fishes in the Illinois River. Um, both years, although not significant in 2019, but both years saw higher catch rates with soybean bait. And uh, yeah, especially in 2020, soybean really outperformed clam, was not significantly greater than cottonseed, but there does seem to be a discernible trend there with smallmouth buffalo. Um, regarding white bass, which I'll add, that's a picture from a personal fishing trip. We don't just throw our white bass on the grass after we uh, get them out of a net. Um, but we did not see any real discernible trends as far as white bass. It kind of seemed to be all over. Um, in neither year was there a certain bait that uh, seemed to really sample them strong, more strongly than the other. Um, more on that later. Um, as far as black crappie, um, in 2019, clam was significantly greater than soybean. And in 2020, uh, soybean was significantly um, lower catch rates than the other two baits. So I think the takeaway there is that surprisingly, um, soybean 
um, is not really being selected for by black crappie. There's significantly fewer black crappie caught in nets baited with soybean. Uh, moving on to the closely related white crappie. In 2019, there wasn't much of a pattern, but again, in 2020, the soybean baited hoop nets captured fewer white crappie. Um, now I did mention that we do catch turtles as well. Um, we caught a lot more in 2020 than in 2019. Uh, I personally believe this is likely due to lower water levels, um, but we catch a wide range of these turtles. We get common snapping turtles, um, sliders, uh, mostly spiny, but we do see a few smooth soft shells, um, as well as a few different map turtles and painted turtles. Um, however, by far our most common species are red-eared sliders and spiny soft shells. Um, so as far as red-eared sliders, um, like I said, we caught a lot more in 2020. However, both years, we had significantly higher um, catch per unit effort of them using hoop nets baited with clam bait. And moving on to spiny soft shells, we saw a similar pattern. Um, definitely more of these captured in clam bait. Um, so what are some of the implications from this? Um, I want to start out and say, so with things like white bass and crappie, we used several other gears to sample the fish community. This was strictly focused on hoop nets. Um, so electrofishing and fight nets might be better for crappie and white bass. Um, however, we did see uh, drums certainly seem to prefer and select for cottonseed. Um, however, I mean, I really want to stress that um, the LTRM program, you know, it's sampling with the same bait over and over. So we should still see those same trends. However, if you really wanted to focus on a drum study or a buffalo study, you could potentially um, implement these baits that they seem to select for. Um, so drums seem to select for cottonseed, smallmouth buffalo seem to select for soybean, crappie seem to have much higher catch rates than everything but soybean, and clam bait. Turtles really seem to love it. Um, as far as the future direction, this is an ongoing study. Once again, the main focus of this is those uh, black carp that I was talking about earlier. It does conveniently lend itself to this bait study, uh, bait comparison study that I brought up. Um, I'd like to further look at size structure differences. So one species I did have time to look at with channel catfish, there is significantly larger channel catfish and nets baited with clam bait and significantly smaller channel catfish and nets baited with soybean. I'd like to also look at some other species as well, like bluegill and flathead catfish in the future. And seasonality, when the water gets really low and warm and uh, as you can imagine, the clam bait doesn't smell really good after 48 hours, do catfish really smell that out? Does it attract them more later in the year as opposed to when the water is cool? Um, so that's another thing we want to look at. Um, with that being said, I would gladly take any questions or comments. And uh, yeah, just like Jordan after his first NBA finals, we were pretty pumped when we finally did get that one black carp. Um, but I am uh, more than happy to answer any questions um, about the black carp study or about the bait comparison. So uh, thank you.